1990. It's a fantastic movie, and I think it tells the typical story of what most people think about immigration. And what I learned from that movie is, much like my family experience, of the first generation comes and holds true to their cultures and becomes Americanized, and the second generation becomes more Americanized, and the third generation really is truly American, and, and something is lost in the translation, but something is also gained. The first movie that came to my mind was The Godfather Part Two. Um, and I was thinking specifically about the, the initial scenes in the movie where we see Vito Corleone um, come to America. We see the iconic shot of um, the Statue of Liberty and then him um, being processed through Ellis Island, which was, I think, the first time I ever saw anything about how immigration at the turn of the 19th, 20th century worked. And the proposal is a movie about an executive, Sandra Bullock, who's trying to force her assistant to marry her to avoid deportation to Canada. The Lost Boys of Sudan comes to mind. There are two main characters, Peter and Santino. I got to journey with them from the Kenyan refugee camps to the resettlement here in the United States. And that journey allowed me to have a broader understanding of what it means to be a refugee here in America. In Born in East L.A., writer-director star Cheech Marin um, appears as a U.S. citizen born and raised who is mistakenly deported to Mexico. Ultimately, um, he returns successfully, but what it really does is um, comically depicts some of the struggles that people go through trying to get into this country. In the beginning of the movie, when Leonardo DiCaprio and his friend are about to get on the ship, um, they're getting, you know, they're asked about like tuberculosis and all these different diseases and things. But the most important one was legs. Did they have legs? And um, as they're rushing to get on, Leonardo DiCaprio says, "Oh no, we've already been checked," and he hops right on. So I guess it was that easy to get to the U.S. back then. And one of my uh, most favorite not so serious movies are, is the 1988 classic, uh, Eddie Murphy classic, Coming to America. It's a, a great look um, at how other people might view ourselves in, in a comic way. There's an illegal immigrant deported in it, and I remember seeing the reality of the detention center, and it really put a face on an illegal immigrant. It really made me sympathetic. Over the weekend, I watched a 1946 classic film called Notorious, and it reminded me of immigration because it was kind of an anti-war kind of propaganda movie, and it showed the fear that people still had around German and German people. And, you know, I find that still uh, common today. We still fear people who are different, come from different countries. Well, there's a lot of uh, subtext and kind of social political commentary um, relating to immigration and apartheid specifically. I guess what I really liked about the film is kind of at the heart of it, it's about a human and a member of the alien race that basically get together and sort of transcend the uh, environmental trappings that they're stuck in. When I saw Zoo Warriors, uh, uh, back when I was probably, I don't know, probably nine, uh, I was uh, probably the you know impressed with the fact that I thought that all Asian people uh, could uh, could do karate and kung fu. I was uh, sadly remiss to to, uh, to know that there wasn't this foreign land that had uh, magical power people. It's about an immigrant Norwegian family uh, living in San Francisco in about 1910, and I especially. Um, related to the movie because of a very strong mother figure in the in the story. She would do just about anything to take care of her family and I think you should watch it. Mm -hmm.